when I designed this uh, drone, this grider that flew several, several meters above uh, the ground, it, uh, when I, I saw everything on top, the grider uh, filled some, uh, one piece of, uh, of a metal uh, filled to, to, to hold properly. And the grider came down and uh, it struck on the ground. And from there, I realized that is so dangerous. And I thought, if I want to continue to be a pilot, it is not this way, but to try something else different. Transforming challenges into possibilities. Welcome to Afrogenesis Artificial Intelligence Assistant Systems Online Systems Booting in few minutes. Please wait until you see a color blue light, then say the word. Jeff is the password. Welcome again to our mind blowing analysis. I'm yours truly Shadrach, and you are watching Jenga Kenya TV today. We delve into something that speaks to the heart of African potential and exploration into the lives of two individuals, young men, David Gadu and Moses Njoroge, two brilliant inventors who have achieved incredible things in the world of AI prosthetics with very little formal education. This episode will be all about the power of African innovation, what we can achieve, and how we need to tap into our youth's creativity to build a self-reliant continent, Africa. David Gatu and Moses Njoroge, both Kenyan inventors, have created something nothing short of remarkable. They have revolutionized the world of prosthetics with AI-driven technology that improves the lives of people who use artificial limbs. My name is David Gadu Jerry. I am an innovator, a maker. My name is Moses Kinanjaroge. Since my childhood, I've been a curious and a passionate innovator. But here is a catch. Neither of them had extensive formal education. In fact, both innovators worked tirelessly relying on self-learning, passion, and persistence to break into the world of tech and innovation. Their story isn't just one of success, but one that sends a powerful message to the whole of Africa. And our dream is not only to live uh, five years is, or ten years, is to live hundred of years trying to come up with ideas that will aid the mobility of persons living with disability or help persons who are in need. Access to sequential testing. Check. Wrist level under radius Y access sequential testing. Education isn't just about certificates. It's about creativity, passion, and even determination. This is a story about what is possible when we look beyond conventional roots and nurture inherent creativity. The potential within our continent is vast, and not just in the big cities, but in our rural areas as well. Our towns, and even the places where people may have little formal education, but incredible talents. David and Moses are living proof for this. With the AI prosthetics, they have brought us closer to smart adoptive prosthetic limbs that can change the lives of amputees. Small finger, ring finger, check. Little finger, check. Thumb finger, check. Index finger, check. Test sequences, protocol deactivated. Think about that for a moment. Two young innovators who had no formal education in AI and yet they have built a solution that can impact millions of lives. Imagine if we nurtured more young minds like theirs across the whole continent of Africa. How much could Africa contribute to the global innovation? This is Aparimp by robotic arm that uses brain signals to operate. 
this device mechanability deploys 8 degrees of motion that is it can rotate along the shoulder level along y axis a x axis elbow level along y axis and even x axis it has ability to twist the list or list pronation it has ability to hold and release now let's take a step back and think about the bigger picture africa has always been a hub of creativity and innovation but far too often we look to the west to europe and to asia for solutions to our problems we are dependent on imports for things as basic as food energy and even something as small as toothpick why is this the case because many african countries have been slow to realize that innovation must come from within us this hand is being controlled by this neural road by a potential headset receiver that monitors or taps the brain signals and it extracts these specific features of these brain signals that reflects the intent of the user. The arm, that is, from the intraparenchymal single neuron units, when ion concentration changes inside the neuron cell membrane, an electric field is set up. And this signal, it is being tapped or goes through various uh, tissues through the, the brain, and the signal can travel through the pia mater arachnoid and uh, uh, it can travel through the skull, through the skin. Then this gadget taps those transductions of those uh, ion currents that are all electrical wave that the brain is releasing. This machine it can convert that signal or it taps and the signal processes converts this signal into a valid electric current through subcomputation and the final current is being transmitted into this arm via radio waves 315 megahertz those signals they go into the the, the biomechatronic hand or the arm uh, operating system then they are being aligned in a way that they will be converted to come to, to, a, to, to become a, a current a valid current that will drive linear motors. These linear motors will drive the arm and they will, they, 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 will, they will close it open, making the hand, the whole hand, to pick as per how you are thinking, as per how you are controlling it, using your intentions. The best solution for Africans' challenge will not come from imported technologies. They will come from us, from our people, from our young innovators. This hand uses a battery of 12 boots. The hand we have made it using uh, available resources like e-waste, wood, labor, leather materials, plastics, and even uh, the wires. Very powerful minds emerging from our own continent. People who saw challenges innovated and now their solutions are changing lives. It's time for African countries to realize that innovation is key to African independence. We need to stop relying on imported goods, technologies and solutions. We need to invest and promote our own innovations. This is not just about creating cool gadgets or advanced technologies. It's about fostering a sense of self-reliance and building industries that will empower Africans to shape their own future. If we want to stop the cycle of over-importation, then we must begin by tapping into our young creative minds. Our youth have the potential to change the course of history, but they need access to the right resources, which are education, mentorship, and even funding. They need to see that their ideas matter and that with determination, they can be the ones who define the future of Africa. So as we wrap it up, in our today's analysis, I want to leave you with this. Kenya and Africa, it's time to shift our mindset. It's time to invest in the youth, support innovation, and promote homegrown solutions. The world is watching, and we have the potential to lead the way in technology, sustainability, and even self-reliance.
Let's stop waiting for the world to solve our problems. The solutions are here within us and it's up to us to build the future we want by Africa for Africa. We have the power to transform our continent. And I thought of uh, creating something different that will help the society rather than killing myself. That's where I met my friend in, uh, uh, in the high school and uh, we started uh, the thought of thinking how to start machines that will help persons living with disabilities. Uh, after yes. primary school, I joined a high school known as Kikude, where I met my friend David. And from there, because after there was this, we had to attend to Science Congress. That's where we had the same interest and we partake at the same project with him where it reached uh, the provincial level. And after that, after we completed Form 4, we decided because our financial background in the family, it's not stable, we decided how can we start our own, our own foundation where we'd be creating projects that will be helping people or innovation that will be helping persons living with disability. Right now there are 15 projects that we have already completed as you have shown them to, as we have shown them to you. The others we can't be able to finish them. They are in the sector of energy. We have ideas in agriculture, security, new invention that have never been invented. Also on models on how to employ the youth, new schemes that have not been invented. And, but due to lack of funds and resources, because where we get our, where we get our materials are from dump site, are from old computers, the e-waste materials. So right now we don't have the cutting edge machines or a good laboratory with equipped with equipped gadgets where we can use them to to make far more affordable and f more affordable and durable products thank you all dear viewers and listeners thank you all our subscribers for supporting us and tuning in for those who haven't subscribed yet make sure you hit that subscribe button like and share also ring that bell so that whenever we upload our new videos you'll always be the first to be notified share this video with your friends family and colleagues let's spread the message of african innovation and let's grow africa together remember the future of africa is in our hands and together we can make a real impact until next time this is shadra kakai and you have been watching jenga kenya tv keep innovating Keep pushing and keep building Africa. Bye.